Fixing my Tacoma roll bar mistake. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. How are you today? Not too great here. You know, when I put this roll bar in it, and don't get me wrong, I love the roll bar on my Tacoma, but there was a problem. They didn't send me the right hardware, and I improvised and was left with this little gap here, which drives me crazy. I actually did a video about that before, so I'm not going to go into great depth on that. But what I am going to do, I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these bolts on both sides to free up the roll bar so that I can then lift it up and access that screw under there to get it out so that I can get the right one, a flathead, hopefully Allen keyed screw so that that sits flat. That's my plan anyway. Now, as I mentioned in the other video, I'm hoping that I don't have to screw with the wiring. We'll see if I can get it high enough, um, if there's enough play in the wiring to be able to mess with it. And then I'm also curious to see if there's any damage under there on this bed rail because of the head of that bolt sitting on it. So let's get started. There's a nice shot for you. Okay, one thing I did do, I, I put together eight bags, four for each side, because there are different numbers of washers in between here to act as fillers, if you will. So instead of just throwing it all in a pile and having to reinvent the wheel again when I do that or put it back together, I want to keep them all separate so that I know which pile went where. So I just numbered some bags from the front back, driver and passenger side, one, two, three, four. And then I'll put each group of washers and bolts in here so that I can keep track of them so I don't have to spend time screwing around trying to redo that all again. So this takes a number, what is it, 17 socket. Just have to remove a bunch of bolts and stuff. And I'll probably have to repaint again because I'll mess up the paint, obviously, when I take these off. But that's kind of the way it goes. So let's uh, see about loosening all these up. I really dread doing this. I hate redoing things, you know, which makes you wonder why I just didn't take the time and do it right the first time, right? I don't know, who knows, got in a hurry. Shouldn't be too difficult to get them off. I mean, since it's not really that complicated. Uh, getting everything out, that might be another issue. <laughs> I think I kind of had to force things in, so I'm probably gonna have to pull all the bolts and stuff off first. So I'm not going to keep you guys on here for all of that. I'm sure you know how to take bolts off of uh, screws. So let me get all that done, then we'll get to the next part. Okay, as you can see, I have it all propped up. A little bungee cord action over there. I probably should put one there too, but I'm not going to do it. Um, was a little difficult to get off because the bolts want to spin uh, behind, of course. Um, here is the rail where that bolt would have been lying. Um, and you can see right here, there's no marks. This is just dirt. And it actually would be about in here, right in this area. And I don't see any problems there. Let's check the other side. I don't see any problems there either, other than just dirt. Uh, so the bolts I'm talking about, of course, the infamous bolts, um, are these right here. This is what I need to remove and hopefully find some sort of a flat bolt to put in there. It's supposed to go in. You see countersunk into this area, right? But obviously that's not happening. So I'm going to pull this one out and I'm going to double check just to make sure the bolts they sent me don't fit. And then I'll have to run to Lowe's and see what I can find. Here we are. We are back and I have the right bolt here. Right here is what they sent me. And right here is what we've got. And I don't know if you guys can tell the difference, but quite a bit of difference between those two. I mean, obviously, this does not fit uh, this one, what they sent, in the hole up here. So we've got the right one, I think. We're going to go ahead and put it in there, crank on it, see if we can't get this done. We've got it in for anybody that wants to see. This is the way it's supposed to go. 
This bolt's actually a little bit shorter or less in diameter, I guess, than the one that they gave us. But nonetheless, it does work and it gets it up below this indentation so you're not pushing against the bed rail itself or sitting at some kind of weird angle. Same thing over here. I went ahead and replaced the other one because it was wrong too. Not much of a problem here, but still puts it up below the lip of the uh, rail here. So it looks good. Now, I am going to see if I can slide it a little bit forward and kind of see if I have a little bit of slack in the wire there. Uh, and then I just have to put the bolts back in and we'll be finished, hopefully. I am done. It took me probably about an hour and a half to do what I did. Um, you guys can see it is back on. Uh, I did not have to cut the wiring or anything, so that was a bonus. That sped the project up a little bit. I had enough play in it where I could scooch the roll bar forward to the position I wanted it in. And let's take a look. Did I actually accomplish anything? Um, I did. You notice here, there's no more gap there. Uh, which is what I wanted. Awesome. And then over here on this side, there never was a gap or not much of one anyway, but it also fits flush with the proper screw um, or at least a flat screw that puts it in there the way that it should be. Speaking of screws, if anybody uh, happens to have the same problem and wants to know what they should get, here's what I got from Lowe's. It is a 3 8 16 by 2 um, and they call it a flat head cap screw, a flat head cap screw. So that's what you need. That's what they should have sent to begin with. I don't know what they sent, but it certainly wasn't this. I still curse them to this day. Anyway, I should have done it to begin with. And that's just a little lesson for me. You know, if I'm in the middle of a mod and something doesn't go right and whatever your remedy is, uh, doesn't yield exactly what it should have been, uh, then stop get the right part, do it the right way, and then you won't spend almost double the time, at least for the install part, uh, redoing it because that wasn't any fun. And I could have damaged something. Who knows? I could have broken the wire. Um, I could have scratched the truck. You know, let's say the roll bar slid over one side and fell. That would have been a disaster. Not worth a quarter inch or eighth inch gap, that's for sure. Anyway, that's the whole project. It's done. I am happy. No longer do I have to be crazy out there looking at my gap. It's finished. Leave a comment. Let me know if you've ever done anything like this. If you've gone ahead with an install that you knew wasn't right. And then later on went back and redid it so that it could be fixed. I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, I have two other channels. Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator. and Rob Motive Civic, all about my adventures with the Honda Civic Type R and the Honda Civic Sport Hatchback. If you're interested, check them out and please consider subscribing. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.